this inadvertent revealing of the uh, intent to arrest Joy Assange. This is confirmation of what we've been concerned about and been talking about since 2010. It is the reason, of course, that Joy Assange was sought asylum and granted asylum inside the Ecuadorian embassy and the reason he remains there today. This confirms what we've been saying, that there is a very real risk that the United States is going to seek to prosecute him for his publishing activities and potentially seek to extradite him, and that if there was to be an indictment, it would be sealed, it would be secret, and we would know that it existed until such time as he was in custody. This is precisely what we've learned from the inadvertent disclosure from the U.S. Department of Justice overnight, and it confirms the concerns we've had and the reason why he was granted asylum in the first place. Can you talk about his reaction? Have you spoken to him inside the Ecuadorian embassy right now? I haven't yet been able to speak to him personally. I'm going into the embassy uh, shortly to discuss it with him. But of course, we are concerned. There have been, ru- we are concerned. There have been rumors over the past few weeks about what might happen. But of course, you must remember that this uh, disclosure came from the 18th District of Virginia. This is a criminal investigation that was started in 2010 in relation to disclosures made by WikiLeaks and the New York Times and the Guardian and other major newspapers around the world, which revealed evidence of US war crimes. Evidence that the United States had not been honest with the American public about how many civilians had been killed in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. These are important public interest disclosures. And that a publisher could face prosecution in the United States, we now have confirmation that they've sought an indictment. Over publishing such truthful public interest information is a real concern. This is a concern not just for us and not just for Julian Assange, which is what we'll discuss about today, but it's also a concern for all of the press, all of the domestic press in the United States, but also what it says about what the United States is doing in terms of exercising jurisdiction over publishers all over the world. What does this mean? Does this mean that the U.S. could seek to prosecute a publisher who's publishing information from abroad about material about the United States? Will the U.S. Will Russia? Will Saudi Arabia? Will China start to follow suit? So I think this raises questions not just for Julian Assange, but for journalists and publishers inside the United States, and journalists, journalists and publishers everywhere who are publishing material about other states around the world. I want to reread the tweet from Kenneth Roth of Human Rights Watch, who said, "Deeply troubling if the Trump administration, which has shown little regard for media freedom, would charge Assange for receiving from a government official and publishing classified information, exactly what journalists do all the time." Jeff Robinson. I couldn't agree with, with Mr. Roth anymore. As we have said since 2010, investigating a criminal investigation into WikiLeaks sets a dangerous precedent for all of the media. This is precisely what New York Times General Counsel David McCraw has been saying for many years, that he doesn't see how the U.S. government can distinguish between what WikiLeaks does and what the New York Times does. Now, this criminal investigation was started under the Obama administration, but as we warned back then, this is a precedent that was dangerous. And now we have President Trump, who has called the press the enemy of the people, who has been openly hostile towards the New York Times and other mainstream media organizations. And I think everyone ought to be concerned about what this potential indictment means. Of course, we are concerned, and it's why Julian Assange is asylum, and it's why he remains inside the Ecuadorian embassy. But this has implications for all media in the U.S. and, as I said, elsewhere around the world. I want to turn to former NSA and CIA Director Michael Hayden. He appeared on CNN this morning. And then fast forward to actually sending an agent of WikiLeaks to Hong Kong to assist Edward Snowden in, in the flight from U.S. Justice. You then later have the, the release of cyber hacking tools apparently stolen from the United States government that leading up to the question of the American election in 2016. I think there's a reason why he stayed in the Ecuador Embassy in London for so long. He went on to talk about, um, talk about um, Julian Assange's history and uh, his uh, Hayden saying these are the reasons he should be arrested even outside of um, whatever the Mueller inquiry is about. Well, let's take those, those two questions separately. We have the fact that WikiLeaks assisted Snowden in getting asylum, and we have the fact that WikiLeaks has published CIA materials. Now, in respect to CIA materials, WikiLeaks has done what other media organizations can and shouldn't do all the time, which is receiving classified information and publishing it in the public interest. That information was verified, it has been shown to be in the public interest, and WikiLeaks has done no different than any other media organization in publishing that material. I think Americans ought to be asking themselves those questions. What does it mean for American democracy?